Hi, I'm Kurt Atone with Astralis Esports, and today I'm going to be going over the top 5 anchors in Siege. Firstly, I'm going to cover what an anchor actually does in the round. As you can kind of tell by the name, these operators are meant to stay on site while the roamers obviously roam. Their gadgets usually help with that, but their guns might be a little bit weaker, depending on which operator we're talking about. You're not meant to get aggressive at all, but as you probably know, some scenarios you're going to have to be aggressive if the roamers die too early, or the attackers keep flooding the sites. But for the most part, try not to overswing anything. And that's pretty much the quick rundown of an anchor. But now let's get into the actual list. Number 5 might shock a few of you, but it's actually Kaid. And if you've been playing Siege for the last 2 or 3 years, you know Kaid has been banned almost every single ranked game. And that was for good reason. Because Kaid's gadget is the Electric Claw, and he comes up to 2 of these. Once you put them down on a wall, they will have a little wind-up period. And they will completely electrify the wall. Now, it doesn't take Einstein to realize why this gadget is good on its own, but I'm going to give you an explanation. Because if you look when I place it down, there's a little bit of a circle. And that means if there's anything that can be electrified, in the circle will be electrified. So he can electrify all certain types of things, not only just walls. You might be thinking to yourself, well, why not just run Bandit? Ben is a 3 seed, why Kai is actually a 3 armor? Well, because can Bandit really just place his gadget right there, get that, and not have to worry about the gadget being destroyed? Yeah, I don't think Bandit really can. Now, there is a little bit of a soft counter to Kai nowadays with the EMP impacts that you don't necessarily need a Ben Thatcher anymore, you can just bring that. And that's kind of why Kai is at number 5. If EMP impacts weren't in the game, then he would probably be number 2 or number 1. Now, we can't forget about Kai's actual loadout. He comes with the TCSG Slug Shotgun, that is actually pretty good. He comes with the AUG A3 that unfortunately has lost to 1.5, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad gun. He comes with the French Revolver and the 44 Magnum. And pair that with a C4, Kaid is a pretty good anchor still, even after the EMP gadgets. And personally, I think he sits at number 5. Ah, almost forgot to mention the TCSG can make rotates and murder holes. Like that. Now, coming at number 4 is Meatball Man himself, Maestro. Maestro's main gadget is the Evil Eye gadget. Once you actually open up into the camera, it would obviously work like a regular camera, but it has thermals. So you can see through smokes and see the body heat of any attackers or sense gadget if they bring a sense. But the little quirk of it is you can open it up and it will fire lasers. It does have a hover heat process if you do use it extensively. But the thing about it is you can either destroy gadgets, let's say there's a thermite or an A-charge on this wall, I can just uh, destroy it before it even goes off, or you can hurt attackers with it, as an example. It does 5 damage per tick. And I can't forget to mention, he comes up with 2 of these. So you can place them up pretty much anywhere you want. A good example here on Blue on Oregon, one you could place them is right here on the actual laundry table, and laundry room obviously. And the other one I like placing here in blue to support my smoke that will be playing on elbow. Now it's obviously going to depend on what map you're playing on and what site to really show the effectiveness of Maestro. But for the most part, his gadgets are very good. Now we can't forget about Maestro's full loadout. He comes with the old of 556 that I am surprised has not been nerfed at all in these last few years. He comes with the ACS-12 that has a 2 time scope on it. And the Karatos handgun and the Bailiff handgun, but the Bailiff is kind of like a mini shotgun. He also comes with barbed wire and impacts, but I mostly run impacts. Also, did I forget to mention that Maestro's cameras are actually bulletproof, so you cannot shoot them at all? Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Now, of all these good things I have said about Maestro, why is he not higher, potentially not even number one? Well, that's because there is three big problems with him. The first one being, since it is bulletproof, it is obviously can be destroyed by the explosives of some kind, so you need an Aedius or even a Wamai to help you protect them. And the second flaw of Maestro is once you open up the turret, you can actually shoot it. I can't obviously show it here, but once you open up the actual part of the camera, yes, it can shoot, but any attacker can shoot the middle of it and completely destroy it. And the last main counter to Maestro is you can simply go up to it and melee it, and you cannot look through it at all, but you can still open it. So you have to rely on sound, and we all know Siege sound can be a bit inconsistent sometimes, and that's me being generous about it. Even with all those downsides, I think Maestro is a powerhouse that is a for basically a force to be reckoned with, honestly. Especially with his ult of 5.56. The fact that it has 80 rounds, fast ride, pretty good damage, 
But it doesn't have a 1.5 or ACOG anymore. So that's a bit of a downside. But other than that, it's just... Spray and pray. That's all you do with it. And he has the Bailiff that you can find on Dock. So overall, with his actual loadout, it's pretty good. And another downside to him is that he's a 3 armor. But with everything else he has, it kind of balances it out. But I think Master belongs at number 4. Going in the number 4 spot would be Mute. Now, unfortunately, with Operation Solar Raid, I believe that's what the season's called anyway, Mute is now a 3 armor. If he wasn't a 3 armor, he would probably be number 2 or potentially even number 1. But I still think he's a good operator nonetheless. Now, the main reason would be obviously his gadget, but you also can't forget about his loadout. If you play Siege, and more specifically if you play Smoke, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. He comes up to four of these Mute Jammers for his primary gadget, and their main use is to counter drones, but that's not the only thing they can do. If Lion's Source is scanned, you can go into the radius. If you look at the bottom right, you can see that I'm in the radius by that little Mute icon. Once I'm in this radius, then Lion cannot actually detect me, so I can move around, provided I'm near the Mute Jammer. It can also counter Dokubi calls. Even if they've already activated, you can just go up to the Mute Jammer, and it will turn it off. Now, like I said, their main use is to actually block off the access for the drones, so put them on doorways and where drone holes would usually be. Also, when you place one down for the first time, then you can see the actual radius once you place them down. Now, paired with his amazing gadget, he comes with the shotgun SMG-11 combo that you can find on Smoke. And, like I said, if you play Smoke, you know how deadly this combination can be. And then pair that with a natural cell, yeah, he's going to give the attackers a hard time droning. I personally think he's at number 3, but if you want to bump him up, then I completely understand. Now, the number 2 spot is going to Rooney, and unfortunately, with the next operation, she's also becoming a 3 armor... But considering the fact she was always classified as an anchor, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Rooney's primary gadget is, well, laser gates. I don't know the actual name of it, but here they are. You can place it on any window or door frames. Now, the reason why her laser gates are so good is because the attackers actually have to waste one of their throwable gadgets or have 30 damage taken from them. And I mean anything they can throw, so that's be flashbangs, frag grenades, smoke grenades, even drones. It does not matter, as long as they throw it, they have to use that in order to get rid of it. Another thing to know about Aruni is that she is one of the only characters that actually have a passive ability. And that is, she can make big holes in the wall. So instead of having a melee, she has a robotic arm. I don't know how she can do this, but... War, I guess. Now there's one thing you have to know about the laser gates. If a defender actually approaches them, then they'll actually deactivate. So, people came up with a trick when she first came out, back in year 5. To where, if you're on the other side of the reinforced wall... You could approach it, and it will actually deactivate since technically there is a defender near it. And so when a Thermite or Ace would try to place down their gadget, they would back away and reactivate it. So, thus, basically, it's just bandit tricking. One trick I like to do with a Rooney with a reinforced wall is actually making a hole in the reinforced wall, because there is the soft side still. Then placing my bulletproof camera in there. And then putting my laser gate over it. So in order for the attackers to actually destroy this bulletproof camera from range, so like let's say a Sophia or Ash trying to destroy it, they have to use a flashbang of some kind, or any throwables like I've said before. And then, when you actually get on the camera, it actually does not obstruct your vision. Well, I mean, it kind of does, but it doesn't really do it as much as you would think. So that's a trick I use every time with Aruni. Now as for her primary loadout, she comes with the EBR-14 that you can find in Dokubi, the Ping-10 Runny that you can find in Mozzie, and this handgun that I don't know the name of that you can find on Capito and Cavera. Now, I think Rooney is number two because, one, she is the most straightforward anchor out of anyone I've talked about so far. But that doesn't necessarily mean she's the best. And I think the number one spot goes to Mira herself. Now, if you've been playing Siege for the last few years, it's pretty obvious why Mira is number one. Though, some of you might disagree with me. The reason why I think is, well, first off, her gadget. Her, well, I don't necessarily know what to call it, other than just a one-way mirror. That on the defender's side, they can see everything, basically. And a little trick to see a little more is by shooting out the soft parts on the reinforcement with your secondary shotgun. And then once we go back, you can see a little more now. And the reason why this is so good is, hypothetically speaking, let's say they start planting a default plant here on bank. It's pretty easy to counter it, because I have a natural so and just bada beam bada boom, the dead. They can't see what I'm doing, but I see everything they're doing. Now, there is one count, well, one main counter to Mira, and that's by going up to it and just meleeing it. 
But let's say and you have an end spot like this. If you let the attackers just walk up to it and melee it, honestly, you deserve to have it meleeing. Because there's no way attackers should be able to do that. And just so you know, she actually comes out with two of these. So Mira herself could be, let's say, right here in red on bank, and we could have, like, I don't know, Jaeger looking into garage. There's two ways the attackers usually push from that's basically being guarded by these mirrors. And as an attacker, it's very hard to push when there's a mirror on board. Can't forget about her loadout, and the main stuff you're going to be using is her vector and the secondary shotgun. And don't forget about the natural stuff that I mentioned earlier. With all that combined, she... Honestly, even after all the nerfs she gotten, she probably still needs more, honestly. Alright, and that's my list for the top 5 defenders in Rainbow Six Siege. Now, you're likely going to disagree with me, which is totally fine. But, I'm going to be reading the comments to see what y'all guys think about this. And, I've been your host, Creator Tony. Make sure you subscribe to the Astralis Esports channel. And with all that said, I hope you have a good day, and goodbye.